Hey, I'm Phil McCaffrey, and this is 8.30 Prep. This is a, a new thing that we're doing, which is broadcasting Zoom live, and I've got uh, Joe Tiger. Well, no, it's not Joe Tiger. It's David Exotic. So, hello, cats and kittens. Uh, we're going to do Grammar Week. So, playing off of uh, Netflix smash hit about poor white trash raising tigers, we're going to talk about grammar all week. So we got four shows, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. David's going to do the first three, and then we're going to have the cranky old white guy say everything that's wrong on the on the uh, ACT. That That's actually a good one. Let's pull David up and say hello to David Cerniglia. Oh, you want to do that? Yeah. Pull up, pull up the... Uh, there he is. Oh, man, you got the whole screen. Do I have the whole screen? Am yeah, you can. You, we we can get. We can, there we go. We can go in between. We we could make you big. We could make you small, and make then me very very small. We'll 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 shrink me as we do your PowerPoint. So make my nose make my nose a little bit smaller. So how does he how does he sound? Is there any is there anybody on there? Let's see. Is there anybody who's got the live chat? Is Ben on here? My audible. I know sometimes I'm too quiet. Right, Ben. Chat it's publicly like, is three R prep. Last names. So how does David sound? So what we've got you set up is you're, um, you're broadcasting through my laptop onto the microphone in the studio. So it's a lot of electricity. It's a, it's a lot. It's a, it's a lot going on. All right. So t talk to me about uh, grammar and standardized test prep. Uh, grammar. Um, the SAT and the ACT both test grammar. Uh, the ACT calls it the English section. The SAT calls it the writing and language section. Um, as many people have heard me complain about before, I think these are both stupid names for sections. The entire test is written in English. They all have writing in them. There's language on the whole test. Uh, what are those sections testing? They're testing sort of a mix of things. Part of that mix of things that they're testing, there were rules of grammar. And part of what rules of grammar, I should have you do a Venn diagram of this, Phil. And part of the rules of grammar is understanding some really basic punctuation, um, which uh, some people get, some people don't get so good. What's the biggest uh, punctuation problems you've seen, Phil? What are the biggest punctuation problems? Oh, commas. Problems how to use? Tomorrow, tomorrow, commas. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about the top 1,342 things you need to know about commas. And then another 338 exceptions to remember about commas. So we'll be covering that. Don't forget to buy our book, Little Book of Commas. Oh, I got to go get tomorrow. Amazon. Tomorrow, you're right. Do I have one? A little Book of Commas. Oh. Plug, you know. Put a put a plug in. All right. Payton Jones said you said he's good. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll have to plug, plug Jay's book, The Little Book of Commas. Big shout out to Peyton. Peyton, what's up? Peyton Jones. All yeah, right. Team viewers, right now, hey, everybody. Uh, a few dropped off. It's like a ten. I'm seeing ten. Well, thirteen. Thirteen's a prime number. No, ten. Yeah, thirteen's good. Thir thirteen's excellent. So we're going. We're going viral. We're gonna. We're we're gonna make this happen. <laughs> oh, there's fourteen on now. All right. So, um, why don't we sw why don't we switch over to your screen and start the PowerPoint and not bore everybody to death. I don't think anyone's ever said that before. Let, let's put on the PowerPoint to prevent <laughs> to prevent boredom. People, okay. Uh, I, I need to share my screen. There's a little first. green button down there that says share. I know, I know how to do it. There we go. Oh my God, that's awesome! You got the Joe Exotic Tiger. <laughs> I'm, I'm pandering since we're doing a little, a little. Lion King. I was trying to think of the opposite, what, what an antonym for exotic was, so I could give myself a, a nickname like David Mundane, <laughs> something like that. Well, hello, cats and kittens. Whatever the opposite of, whatever the opposite of exotic is. Now, now, searching for this blue tiger print pattern on Google today, I'm sure it's going to screw up Google's uh, algorithm for me. I think it's going to be confused. It looks pretty good on, on, the, um, on the phone. So let's spend a few minutes uh, talking about punctuation. Um, I'm going to go through this quickly as though it were a review, so we're not going to go into a ton of detail. Um, if anybody has questions, can they chat? Yeah. YouTube? 
yeah, yeah. Actually, I can I can see all the chat. I got the my phone and and my lap my laptop is right there, and then the big board that you're on, which is sub, sub, the the second screen. I, I would be shocked if anyone actually asked a question, but if you want to ask questions, that would be great. Uh, okay, so we'll talk about some punctuation. First thing, we we give prizes for questions. Right, that's good. Oh, stink bugs, man. Okay. Sixteen. Uh, before we talk about punctuation, we're gonna have to do a little review of parts of speech. I promise, guys, we'll go through this really quickly. This is one of the things that you need to have a pretty good handle on in order for everything else to make sense. So um, uh, parts of speech at, at a really basic level, having a super basic understanding of this stuff. Um, I know some of you who are on have heard me yammer on about this stuff for a long time. Maybe Ben, maybe Peyton, if you guys are still there. Um, but it's important to, to do a review of this stuff and just get a good handle on, on what this stuff is. So nouns as a quick review. <clears throat> or a person, place, thing, or idea. Um, I put idea in there because of abstractions, things like love or citizenship, which are not tangible, you can't actually touch. Those things are still nouns. Uh, pronouns, pronouns are, are small words that replace a noun or nouns, words like I, he, she, it, these, them, those, them, who, whom, which are not also pronouns. Uh, verbs are actions or states of being. The reason that I always add states of being in here is, is verbs like to be or to seem don't always feel like verbs because they're not real action-y. They're not action-y like run and jump and hide and cry. That got dark really fast. Sorry, guys. Uh, adjectives. Adjectives describe <laughs> nouns. Adverbs. They describe the rest of the stuff. Don't worry about this too much. Uh, adverbs describe verbs, uh, can describe a verb, an adjective, or another adverb. Uh, maybe we can talk about, we can do another 8.30 prep where we just talk about talk about modifiers like adjectives and adverbs. That would be cool. That'd be a good one. That would be tall, fuzzy, amazing, cool. We could talk about modifiers. We could come up with a really annoying description for the name of that. Uh, prepositions, my favorite. I should have done a graphic of a preposition plane next I, time. I have, a, uh, I have a handout that you did. I meant to, I meant to send it to you. Yeah. I have some little clip art plane and cloud pictures that are in a Google Doc somewhere I need to I need to resurrect. I pulled it back up. I don't I don't know how I found it. I have so much I found stuff. I found your Google Doc that had all the crap on it. It had the airplane on it. Uh, so talking about we'll just have we'll, Phil and I can just have a little conversation for a minute. Uh, uh, the other night, uh, talking to some of the uh, investors, one of the guys like, well, well how are you guys gonna get all this content? <laughs> I was like, we have plenty of content. Don't worry about that. Content, we don't have to worry about it. Yeah, no, that's, that's done. Uh, preposition, show position, uh, indicates position in time or space. Words like above, below, beyond, beneath, above. Before. Above. After. After, before. Uh, parts of speech, important to During. know those because you're going to need that for the rest of the stuff we're going to talk about. Uh, real quick review of clauses, dependent and independent. Um, again, I'll make this quick for those of you that haven't done this yet. Um, this would be a good thing for you to Google or to schedule an appointment with me or with Phil to talk about. That would be awesome too. Uh, but getting a good handle on dependent and independent clauses because a large portion of the punctuation on the SAT and ACT, as I'm about to show you, has to do with punctuating stuff that is independent and stuff that is dependent or stuff that, it can, that can stand on its own or stuff that can't stand on its own. Uh, so I had a couple examples. Uh, let's take a look at a couple of groups of words and see if they are independent or not independent. Best way to do this is really just to use your ear and listen inside your head. That, that was weird. Uh, listen, use your inner ear or your outer ear. And no, it's hear. listening inside your head. Yeah. You, li you listen to yourself inside your head. You learn to speak. Sure. You learn to speak by imitating people and then ultimately you, your brain sorts out the rules. So you learn the rules intuitively by listening, and then you hear it in your head. Totally. So let's listen. Okay, Matilda and her friends left for vacation. That sounds okay to me. That's an independent clause. Uh, after taking a shower. That sounds like a prepositional phrase. Yeah, because prepositions show position, and there's a position word in there, right? After, after taking a shower. 
I can just hear that. That doesn't sound like a complete sentence to me. I need something else. All right, what else we got? Uh, Alfred drove home. It's a full yeah. thought. Why not? Uh, and then we'll generalize after this and talk a little bit about subject verb. Um, the students took. What did oh, they take? That's a problem. That's not an independent clause either. Just use your ear. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but you know, but you know what? Students they suck me dry all the time. They they take from me all the time. So I don't know that that feels like a complete thought, you know. <laughs> yeah, and this is where we can get into some really hardcore grammar and talk about transitive verbs and intransitive verbs and all the stuff that Phil had to learn when he took Latin. I made it through a half a semester of Latin. Phil actually took Latin two so years. He at some point, had to learn transitive and intransitive. Verbs. I never really never. learned that. I, I can't remember it, so. Ugh. All right. Independent clauses. Again, let's talk about what independent clauses are then. So an independent clause must have a subject. And again, this, is, this should be review. If you guys don't really have a clear idea of what subject is or what a verb is, this is stuff to Google. Um, find in the Erica Meltzer book, study, schedule an appointment with me or Phil. Ask a question in the chat window on YouTube, whatever. Uh, so an independent clause must have a subject, which is a noun that's doing the action or a noun that's doing the verb, and it must also have a verb, an action or a state of being. And it should also have a closed parentheses after the G and before the period. That's a typo. Just wanted to see if you guys were paying attention. <laughs> um, you... And then the second one is it has to sound complete. Uh, this one might not be very satisfying for some of you, but this is what it gets you. And Phil did a good job of this. Um, if we take a look at this clause down here, the students took, someone could easily argue, well, there is a subject, the students, because took is the verb and they're doing the action. That's a subject verb. But if you replace that, if you replace that with take, would that be the students take? Uh, see, they don't give edge cases like that on the test. It's always things that are really clear. Like I used to use... Um, I used to use lifted, like, you know, James lifted. That's not, a, that's not an independent clause. But again, you get some of our lax bros, and they're like, hey, man, what'd you do at the gym last week? Did you do cardio? They're like, no, man, I lifted. So we use that as an intransitive verb, but it's not really. Anyway, uh, independent clause have to sound complete. So uh, a, a clause like since I drove home, the part with this is the word since. That's a preposition also, um, just like after I had in, in one of the earlier examples. There's a subject and verb, I drove home, and if we had, I drove home without the since in it would be okay. Um, and then I gave you another one with uh, another one with took. All right, so now that we remember what independent clauses are, which are just groups of words that can stand on their own by themselves without adding anything to them. When we have two or more independent clauses, and I'm, I'm, there's never been a there's never been a question on the test. I was thinking about this last night, where there were more than two independent clauses in a sentence, and they asked you to punctuate them. It's only ever two, but you can have more than two independent clauses in a sentence. Well, well, well let's back this up. There, they, there is an actual case of more than two independent clauses, but the third one they leave alone. So you punctuate. Right. They don't you, make you punctuate the third one. No. Yeah. So you can you can have lots of independent you can have lots of independent clauses um, in a sentence, uh, and it's not a run-on sentence as long as you punctuate it correctly. Okay, so we'll take a look at these two clauses I gave you, and there are two here. Millie left early, so we have a subject and a verb, which would be Millie and left. We actually don't even need the early for that to be independent. We could just say Millie left. Uh, Harold stayed behind to clean. Okay, so we got Harold stayed. Uh, that could stand on its own anyway, but we have two independent clauses here. The issue that we have is in between these two independent clauses. The way it stands now is not correct. So there are three different ways that we can punctuate this. <clears throat> we can put a period between these two independent clauses. We can put a semicolon between these two independent clauses, or we can put a comma and a fanboys in between those clauses. That would be for and nor but or yet so. You remember what those are called in grammar, Phil? Coordinating conjunctions. I learned that from you. Coordinating conjunctions. I don't even know what that means. There's also subordinating conjunctions and coordinating conjunctions. 
There are other types of conjunctions, too. Grammar gets really complicated. Luckily, the stuff that they test is pretty straightforward. Maybe we can play conjunction, junction. What's your function? Okay, function? I feel like we'll get, there's like some copyright issue. We'll demonetize. How many Facebook viewers do we have? Six? 19 right now. What does YouTube pay us out for 19 viewers? Jeez. If I knew this many people were going to be here, I would have prepared. Okay. <laughs> Two independent clauses, period, semicolon, comma, fanboys. Phil, tell the young boys and girls watching on YouTube, what's the difference between a period, a semicolon, and a comma fanboys on these tests? On the ACT and the SAT, they only test function and not style. So the function is what they want. So if these three were answer choices, they would all three be wrong because they do the same thing. So there would be something that changed it. This would be um, a question of which one does not uh, effectively change the sentence or something like that. Uh, Thursday, I definitely, I'm starting off with this. So on Thursday, I'm starting off with things that are always wrong. Periods and semicolons with the same words are always wrong. Yeah, man. So always. that's a preview always. of Thursday. Yeah, for those of you, for those of you who care, the, the difference <laughs> between a period and a semicolon in real life is about how related the independent clauses are. A semicolon uh, is for independent clauses that are slightly more closely related. And I promise you, even if you Google this and look at all the grammar sites you want to, you will not get a more satisfying explanation than what I just gave you. Uh, it's literally just about relatedness. And the problem with language is language is not like math. We can't easily tell how close or far apart sentences are. We can tell how close or far apart numbers are. Some of us can. And if you can't, Stay tuned for more 8.30 prep when Phil teaches you how to do math. Well, that's that's if we're talking about rings or groups, but I'm not going to go there. Right. <laughs> uh, okay. Because I, uh, I did a really bad job of that in, in my math class. Length does not equal a clause. So, so I don't know what I meant by that. Um, if it's here's the issue. <laughs> here's the issue. But... I think I meant to write more than that. The, 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 the length of it has nothing to do with punctuation. What it has to do with it has to do with the clause. There's, even that was a bad way of saying it. I'll explain to you what I mean by this. If we take a look at this stuff right here, which is way more stuff than I gave you before. Exhausted from a long week and ready to head home to watch the last episode of Tiger King, Millie left early. Harold, noticing how tired Millie looked, stayed behind to clean. Even though these are longer, what we have here is we have two independent clauses. Exhausted from a long week, Millie left early. That's one independent clause. Harold, noticing how tired Millie looked, stayed behind to clean. Do, do, you, know, not, do you know the, the problems, the real estate problems I had that, that my two next door neighbors, the one that moved was named Millie, and the, guy yeah. on the, and the guy on the other side that she sued was named Harold? Did you know uh -huh. that? That's super weird. That is really creepy. I wonder if Athena's I, I, watching. I decided I was going to use all Victorian names for my example sentences. So I had like Winifred and Harold and Maud and yeah. I don't know because you got to use something. It feels weird. It feels weird to use to intentionally try to use diverse names. It, for us, Although, yeah, yes. We have enough students that have interesting names that we could use a throw in a Simran or an Arvin, in addition to a Harold and a Millie. Like, whose name's Millie anyway? That's such an old, old-fashioned old name. Okay. We have, and, a, and we have a lot of Alexises. A lot of Alexises <laughs> and, and a couple of Hopes. Um, and Grace. Gra Grace. We got lots of Graces. Is any Grace watching? We're all from Oakland Catholic. <laughs> um, and some from North. Hey, guys. Uh... These are still two independent clauses, even though they're longer. So our options in between early and Harold are period, semicolon, comma, fanboys. That's it. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, what <laughs> happens. What happened to, oh, oh, I went in backwards. Why did I do that? Okay. Uh, I feel like there's a reason I did that backwards, and I can't remember why. All right. Uh, let's take a look at what colons do, which is also the same thing that dashes do. Colons, a single colon and a single dash does the same thing on the ACT and 
pretty much does the same thing on the SAT. You know, um, you're really so, you're really freaking me out with this colonoscopy because of my age. I don't know. It's important, right? Like after you're <laughs> after you're 45, my my doctor said to me. So my grandfather. Let's talk for a little bit. Let's get real. How many? What do we have? 18 people. That's weird. There's still people hanging on. Let's see if this works. <laughs> well, you really chase them away if you're talking about my, colonoscopies. My, my died, That's a little my gross. My died of colon cancer. My grandfather died of colon cancer. So every time I go to the doctor, I'm 44. For the last like five or six years, I'm like, should I get a colonoscopy? Because my grandfather died of colon cancer. And I keep asking. And she's like, not until you're older. Stop asking. So the last time, she's like, I'm starting to get the feeling that you just want a colonoscopy. <laughs> I was like... I assure you, although I heard the drugs can be really good, I'm not in a rush to get a colonoscopy. Okay, back to dashes and colons. Okay. I think so, I think we're changing the name of this PowerPoint. Don't forget to get your colons checked, kids. Okay. <laughs> that's just gr- that's just gross. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm getting I'm getting all uh, flustered here. All right. Uh, here's here's the way that people typically see colons in something like this. There are three college essay topics to avoid, my mission trip, what makes me special, and we're going to have to add this one, what I did during quarantine. That's going to be a real tough essay to write, man. Yeah, that's going to be a terrible essay. We're going to be working on that bad boy. Don't write what I did during quarantine as my essay. Unless you did something really cool. Could be something cool. Do something cool during quarantine, guys. Hey, maybe maybe Um, somebody sewed a bunch of masks, donated it. To a shelter, right, right. You know, they did something yeah. good, you know. Well, yeah, be like, stay at home. One of our students who are watching and I talked about something to do during quarantine a couple days ago. So, make use of the time. Yes. Learn stuff, man. Find stuff that you want to figure out and figure it out. You have all the world's information at your fingertips. Use it. Okay. Uh, this is the way that we usually see a colon, which leads people to believe that colons are for introducing lists because that's often what you see them doing. And here we have my mission trip, what makes me special, what I did during quarantine. Maybe you could combine all those three in one super bad college essay. Um, but what Colin's We, we could doing, make this list a lot longer, like when my grandmother died when I was in middle school and how bad it yeah. affected my life. How I <laughs> occupied myself during rehab. Yeah, any of this, any of those things. <laughs> Reasons uh, to go to rehab, being a student of 3R prep. All right, move, uh, on, move, <laughs> move on. Here's what Collins do. They separate independent clauses at the beginning. There are three college essay topics to avoid. That is an independent clause from a dependent clause at the end. My mission trip, what makes me special, I I can can this screen. are independent clauses. Um, so it looks like it's only for lists, but you can put any independent, any dependent clause, excuse me, after the colon that you want. Um, okay. Last, last couple of, last couple of things, um, stuff that's not essential. And again, I'm going to talk about this pretty quickly. If you want to talk details, uh, let's figure out a time to do that. Uh, this sentence, Virginia, who never likes people welcome the quarantine. If we take a look at these two commas here that are setting off these words in the middle, these are non-essential stuff commas. These <laughs> commas are setting off stuff that can be taken out. So watch. Virginia, welcome to quarantine. That means those commas are correct. Just as a period, a semicolon, and a comma fanboys are the same thing on the SAT and ACT, a pair of commas like this is also the same thing as a pair of dashes, which is also the same thing as a pair of parentheses. Even though I didn't end my parentheses. In one we of my do, we, by the way, we do have a Grace watching. I just got an email. But, I mean, statistically, I'm surprised we only have one. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Grace. We, I won't ask which Grace it is. You can tell me later. Okay. I know, I know which one it is because I got the email. I know which one it's not, unless <laughs> someone's forcing her to do it <laughs> at gunpoint. Okay, um, and I'm going to leave you with two more, and this will this is really going to be a teaser for next time. This is for tomorrow. There are two big comma rules that if you don't know anything else about commas, and I didn't give you an example here, but I'm going to go back and uh, too far. <gasps> okay. 
Um, the two big places that you want to avoid putting commas, and I'm going to, I'll go into this in a little bit more detail tomorrow. I'll, I'm still going to give you some short stuff to remember, uh, some easy comma tricks to remember. Uh, but the two big ones, if you can't make it tomorrow night, are this. We do not put commas between subjects and verbs. So Matilda and her friends left for vacation. Left or to leave is the verb here. Matilda and her friends are the subject. We do not put commas between the subject and the verb. No commas between subjects and verbs. No commas between subject and verbs. And again, we'll talk about this a little bit more tomorrow. But after Just, taking a shower, I'd put a comma. And, and then taking a shower. We're going to put someone after there because that's a prepositional phrase. But the other place we don't put commas is before or after prepositions. So for is a preposition. It's good to know that what prepositions are. That's why you have to know your parts of speech. So no commas between subject verb, no commas before or after preposition. That was it. I don't know. I could do it that fast. How long was that? Is that like 10 minutes? What are the, super fast. What's, no, the, what's the 10 fast. rules? So the, so here are the, so here are the 10 big, here are the 10 big, uh, the punctuation things that you need to know. Um, we'll get you back through them. Too much review, too much review. So when you have two independent clauses, your three punctuation options are period, semicolon, comma, fanboys. That's three, right? Count them for me, Phil. One, two, That's three. 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 All right, I count them. There's three. Period, semicolon, comma, fanboys. That is for two independent clauses. You have to have an independent clause on either side, no matter how long the independent clauses are. We're still at three. Okay. Colons and dashes, same thing. Colons and dashes. Four. That's five. That's five. And that is independent clause at the beginning, dependent clause at the end. So period, semicolon, comma, fanboys are two independent clauses, a colon and a dash. Independent clause first, dependent clause second. Uh -huh. Then non-essential clause or non-essential stuff punctuation would be a pair of commas. We're going to count a pair of, of commas. Pair of dashes, parentheses. That's eight. Brackets and braces. And then our and then our teaser for tomorrow night, which is the two big comma places to avoid is no comma between subject verb, no comma before or after preposition. All right, that's it. So today was oh, there's the Tiger King. <laughs> you brought the tiger on. There's the Tiger King. So we're going to uh, wrap it up. This was the essentials of punctuation. The, you covered eight, and there are actually ten punctuations, but it is a period, a single comma, and a semicolon, um, a colon or a dash, a single dash called an M dash, a pair of dashes, a pair of, of commas, a pair of parentheses, and then brackets and braces, which we didn't cover. Yep. So we'll go over those. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll go over those and we'll talk about, we also need to talk about apostrophes. But we're actually going to talk about apostrophes when we talk about commonly confused words. Because ITS and IT apostrophe S are two words that are really commonly confused. And so that's definitely going to be on Thursdays, always wrong, because you go over it and I'll reinforce it. There's always an answer choice on the SAT, ACT that's always wrong. The ACT loves it, and we'll go over that on Thursday. So this was Monday, basics of punctuation. Tomorrow is commas. Wednesday is words that are commonly confused, like then and then. Yeah, we'll see how that will affect or affect your grade. <laughs> You'll so, have to lay so, down or lie down after we talk about it. So then on Wednesday, we will affect the changes that effectively do a comma replacement. So thanks for joining us on 830 Prep. I'm Phil McCaffrey. This is David Tenigler. What's on your hat, by the way? Thanks, guys. Oh, uh, this is from a barbecue place in this is from a barbecue place in Nashville called Peg Leg Porkers. It's a, it's a pig with a little wooden leg. Our students are... Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. <laughs> That's right, they're not a sponsor. I'm sure they're probably closed. They could probably use the free shout-out. So any, if any of the 12 people watching... 16 you know, now. Down in Nashville, big shout-out. 
uh, we're looking for for our weekly YouTube uh, vlog. Phil and I are looking for sponsors. All right, if anybody wants to sponsor our our vlog with uh, with some hats, we'll definitely wear some hats. Who who's who's got no more AA sponsors calling us? That's not funny. <laughs> we gotta That's we gotta find some we gotta find some students that have business businesses that are the, the only the only student that I'm friends parent that I'm friends with lately has a, a non-appropriate business. That's that's Arnie who owns Helltown. So I, I can't be advertising beer on my teenage YouTube. No. Okay. So it's 8.30 prep. I'm Phil McCaffrey. Say goodnight, David Sonniglia. Bye, guys. We'll see you tomorrow night at 8.30.